Welcome everyone. This is the engineer Amr Abdullah speaking. Today we will be discussing tutorial number nine. In this tutorial, we have three topics to be discussed. Our first topic will be braces paradox. Our second topic will be frequency and headways. Our third topic will be mode shift analysis. Let's begin with our first topic, which is Brace's Paradox. It's based on Wardrop's first and second equilibrium principles. It was discovered by a scientist named Dietrich Brace in 1968. It demonstrates that under certain conditions, adding capacity, and by capacity I mean a new road, to a road network in order to decrease the travel time, can actually make everybody worse off as we will see in the given example in the next slides. So let's analyze our network. Our network has four zones. So we have four zones. Zone A, zone C, zone B, and finally zone D. We also have here five links link ac link cb link ad and link db and this dotted link cd we will see the function of this link in the next slides please note that link fc has no travel cost function as the other links it's like a connector if you remember in tutorial number four it has no travel cost function finally note that link ac has the same travel cost function as link db and the same link ad has the same travel cost function as link cb this is our network in Braces Paradox example. So, let's see our example. The linear relationship associated with each link represents the travel time flow formulation in minutes. That means these travel cost functions here. Solid arrows indicate existing links and the dotted arrow a planned link that was link CD the planned link was CD I removed it from here because I want to analyze the network before adding this link and I will analyze it again after adding this link so we can know the effect of this link on this network and see how the paradox works assume first that there are 1000 cars wishing to travel between A and B and none from F. The logical route choice under these conditions is for 500 cars to use the ACB route and the other 500 cars to use ADB route because the travel cost function on route ACB is the same travel cost function as route ADB. So the demand, which is 1000, would be divided on both routes. Let's see how to calculate this travel cost function, which is 30 minutes. So we need to go from A to B. We will either use this route, ACB, or this route, ADB. So if we used ACB route, we have to go from A to C. Our function is 2 plus 0 0.02 multiplies 500, which is 26 minutes. And CB root, our travel cost function is 25 plus 0 
zero zero two multiplies five hundred, which is the flow, will give us twenty six minutes. I'm sorry, this is not twenty six. Let me erase it. This is twelve. This is 12 minutes. So when you add 12 plus 26, you will get 38 minutes. And the same is done for root A, D, B. Because travel cost function of link A, D is the same as link C, B. And link db is the same as link ac, so you will get the same value, which is 38 minutes. This network was before we added the link cd. Now consider that a high capacity link, which has a high number of lanes is built between C and D, which is this dotted link here. Under these conditions, all drivers would choose to start on the AC path, as under the most loaded conditions, it would, co would cost only 24 minutes to reach D when it takes at least 25 minutes if the AD route is used is used. Let's see what that means. So at the beginning, if we are going to start on route AC, so we are here at A, so A, C, D path AC is equal to two plus zero point zero two multiplies our vo our volume which is one thousand plus CD root So we now we go from A to D We move from zone A to zone D CD root is 1 plus 0 0.001 multiplies 1000 Which will give us 24 minutes this 24 here and then it takes at least 25 minutes if the AD route is used so we have two options to go from zone A to zone D the first option is to use the new link so ACD path the travel cost function is 24 minutes our second option is to use the direct link here, AD. So the sec second option here is AD. And of course it takes at least 25 minutes if AD root is used because its equation here is 25 plus 0 0.002 multiplies the flow. So if we assume that this flow is zero, so at least you will take 25 minutes to go from A to D. So at C, and for the same reasons, every rational driver would take the CD route as it would take at most 24 minutes to reach B, one minute less than the most optimistic conditions for 
see the root. Let's see what this means. So we are at zone C here. So it says that every rational driver would take the CD route as it would take at most 24 minutes to reach B, one minute less than the most optimistic conditions for CB route. So now we, we want to go from C to B. We have also two options. Either we go from C to D, then from D to B, this is the first option, or we can use the direct link between C and B. So let's see the travel time cost for each option. For the first option, C, D, B, root is used. The travel cost function of C, D is 1 plus 0 0.001 multiplies 1000. And the travel cost function of db is 2 plus 0 0.02 multiplies 1000. That was our flow from the beginning. This equation here will give you 24 minutes. This 24 here. And one minute less than the most optimistic conditions for the CB route. The most optimistic conditions here, it means that the flow is zero. So if this flow is set to be zero, if we assume no one is using this route, so you will have at least 25 minutes. That's why the first option, which is the CDB route, is better than the, se the second option by one minute. Let me erase this. Second option, which is the B root. So this is one minute less than the DB direct link. Now let's assume that all the drivers will use the A, C, D, B route to go from zone A to zone B. Let's see what will happen to the travel time. So it will be the travel cost function of link AC 2 plus 0 0.02 multiplies 1000 plus link CD which is 1 plus 0 0.001 multiplies 1000 plus db link which is 2 plus 0 0.02 multiplies also our flow which is 1000 this equation here will give you 46 minutes this 46 here Let's complete. In effect, eight minutes longer than 
before the CD link was built. So if you remember in the beginning, we didn't have this link at all. So if we, if we want to go from A to B, we either used A, C, B root or A, D, B root. And if you remember, our travel time was 38 minutes. So if you subtract 38 from 46, you will get 8 minutes. This 8 minutes here. So if all drivers could agree not to use the CD link, they would all be better off. And here comes the paradox. We added this link, CD, which has a high capacity, which means low travel time, in order to improve the travel time of this network. However, we didn't expect the travel time to increase. So, if starting from the original position, 500 on each route, if one driver only chooses to use CD link, he would be better off as from C. It would only take 13.021 minutes to reach B, much less than the 25 plus 1 that the CB route offers. Let's see what that means. So we are at zone A. Let me use the blue color this time. We are at zone A and we want to reach B. So we have 500 here on each route. So we can redraw this network. Here is zone A, zone C, zone B, and zone D. We have 500 here and 500 here. Of course, this 500 here, the down 500, if you want to go from A to B, this 500 will use this route, A, D, B. And the other 500 will use this route, A, C, B, but only one driver will use the A, C, D, B route. So let's calculate this 13.021 minutes for this one driver only. Of course, if you want to go from A to C, you are moving with 500. So it won't make any difference if we used this function or not, we will start from C because you are already moving with this 500 and we are comparing this 500 with this one driver who will use the link CD. So they both here have the same travel time. So we can exclude it from our calculations. We will calculate only CDB root for one driver and the CB root for 500 drivers. So for, for, for one driver only, link CD one plus 0 0.001 multiplies the flow. The flow on this link this time will be one driver only.
so multiplies one plus two plus zero point zero two this is the travel cost function of link db multiplies five hundred and one and I will tell you why I used here 501 because we had from the beginning 500 drivers going from A to D and from D to B and then one driver will merge with this link from CD so the original 500 will be 501 this equation here will give us 13.021 minutes. We will compare this 13.21 minutes with the 500 that used CB link. So, so the travel time of CB link is 25 plus 0. Point 002 multiplies 500 will give us 26 minutes this 25 plus 1 here so the conclusion of this is written here ACDB path I will do it in green ACDB path is a selfish equilibrium condition why is it a selfish equilibrium because only one driver will get the benefit to use the link CD but this is such that, uh, such that everybody is worth off than before the new link was built. Our second topic in this tutorial is the frequency and headways using point check methods. This topic is very popular in public transportation planning systems and preparing public transportation planning schedules all over the day. We have some definitions to know before we start solving an example. The frequency or the transit frequency is the number of vehicles per hour per route. So this frequency tells us how many buses or cars I will use in one hour. The headways is the reciprocal of the frequency. It is the departure time between each two consecutive vehicles expressed usually in minutes and during one hour. So in this topic, I need to know how many buses or cars I will use in one hour. Of course, we know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So if I assumed that I, I will use four buses, for example, based on the load calculations, and the load here is the passengers. So if you divided 60 over four, you will get the headways. And this means that the headways is the reciprocal of the of the frequency. So instead of writing one hour over four, we removed this one one hour and expressed it in minutes. So let's see how to calculate the load. The load this time is the passengers. We are going to use the point check methods while calculating. There are two methods in the point check methods. So the frequency F here, F of J, 
J stands for the time period. When are you calculating the frequency? Are you calculating the frequency at 6 a.m. for example to 7 a.m. or during the peak hour let's say from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. this is J. It is written here the period. The P which is the passengers over gamma load factor multiplies C. So C here represents the capacity of a vehicle. It is illustrated here number of seats plus the maximum allowable standees. People who are standing inside the public transportation whether it is a bus or train and gamma is a load factor during this period to decrease the capacity because for uh, it is uh, it's for sure that you will not feel comfortable if the public transport is fully loaded so we use a reduction factor to decrease this capacity of course if we increased the capacity we will require lower number of cars. So we have two methods to calculate the frequency in the point check method. So we can write them here. Point check methods the first one is based on the maximum daily point load and this gives us F1 this F1 here and the other one which will be discussed in the, in the next slides is based on the maximum hourly load which is named as F2 let's begin with F1 which is based on the maximum daily point load F1 is the maximum of P passengers so PMDJ here is illustrated the observed load at the daily maximum load point at time J while PMD is the total observed load at this point the maximum of PMDJ divided by the desired occupancy, this DO is equal to gamma, the load factor multiplies the capacity, will give you the desired occupancy level. Or FMJ, FMJ is the minimum frequency, which is usually, usually taken as 3, it will be given in the question. The second point check method is based on the maximum load observed in each time period or the maximum hourly load. F2J is the maximum of PMJ, the maximum passenger load at each period, divided by the desired occupancy or FMJ which is illustrated in the previous slide, the minimum frequency which will be given. So let's see our example. Here we are given a route. So we can assume that there is an origin. Let's say it, it's A. And there is a destination called B. 
and we have here six stops so like this one two three four five six and we have also here in this table the distance in kilometer to the next stop we are also given the average observed load passengers in each hour so this graph here this graph here is translated to this table from 6 to 7 from stop number 1 to stop number 2 we have 50 passengers if you sum them all during all times you will get this 776 which is named here here total load or passengers this is how to use this table we are also given the desired occupancy level 50 and the minimum frequency to be three vehicles per hour where we are required to find the frequency and headway for each stop using both methods the maximum daily point and the maximum hourly volume let's begin with our first method which is based on the maximum daily load at a certain stop or point this slide here is an illustrative slide which tells us how to apply this method while solving so F1 G the frequency using the first method is the maximum of the maximum daily load divided by the desired occupancy which was given by 50 or the minimum frequency which was given by 3 so this here maximum is wrong is wrong here this should be minimum so in the first method we are looking for the maximum daily load so here of course this 1740 is the maximum load so in the first method we will use this stop only while calculating the frequency the frequency is equal to pm over the desired occupancy so we need to know how to get this 8 this 8 is equal to we are in the first period so we'll use this 400 400 divided by 50 the, the desired occupancy will give us this 8 and from 7 to 8 a.m. we will use this 420 so it will be 420 divide by 50 will give us 8.4 for the next period it's 400 also same as the first period you will get 8 the next period it's 320 divided by 50 so 320 divided by 50 will give you 6.4 and finally 200 over 50 will give you this 4 now we calculated the frequency using the first method 
daily maximum load point now let's calculate the headways I told you before that headways are calculated in minutes the headway is equal to 1 over the frequency it is the reciprocal of the frequency since it's calculated in minutes so one hour here which is our reference is equal to 60 minutes over the frequency so for the first period 60 over 8 will give you this 7.5 so we will use 8 cars the time between the departure of each car is 7.5 minutes this is for the first period for the second period it will be 60 over 8.4 which will give you this 7 the next one will be 60 over 7.5 I'm sorry it will be 60 over 8 will give you this 7.5 the next one will be 60 over 6.4 Will give us nine and finally 60 over 4 will give us this 15 of course if you compare this f1 the frequency using the first method with the minimum frequency you will find that f1 is always bigger than this three so for example if we assume that the frequency in the last period here was two then we will exclude it and take the minimum frequency which is three in the second method we will calculate the frequency based on the maximum hourly load in all stops F2 here stands for the frequency using the second method it is the maximum of PMG the maximum hourly load divided by the desired occupancy or the minimum frequency which is given by 3 so here we are looking for the maximum hourly load if you take a look here from 6 to 7 the first period in all stops the maximum hourly load is 400 so we will select this 400 to represent all stops in this time period and from 7 to 8 the maximum hourly load for all stops also is this 510 so this 510 will represent this time period for all stops and the same is done for 8 to 9 9 to 10 and 10 to 11 we also selected the maximum hourly load as you can see here so now we need to get this frequency using the second method remember that that the minimum frequency is 3 so this one will be 400 over 50 will give you this 8 the second one will be 510 divided by 50 will give you 10.2 and so on this will be also 400 over 50 the next one will be 320 over 50 
and finally 220 over 50 of course all these frequencies are more than the minimum frequency so we will not use this minimum frequency now to get the headways it is usually expressed in minutes so we divide 60 minutes over the frequency in each time to get these values our last topic in this tutorial is the mode shift analysis let's explain it in an easy way for example here if you have a road this road consists of a number of lanes and we also have a rail road rails here it means that this road is accessible by trains only and of course here this road is accessible by different types of transport modes for example here private cars shared taxi minibus public bus public microbus trucks and so on we will calculate the volume to capacity ratio for this route and if the volume over capacity ratio is more than one we will shift some of the traffic here some of the transport modes here which are using the road to the rail based on some conditions that are written here we will explain this later in order to decrease the volume to capacity ratio to be less than one so that the road is not crowded in our example we are given Cairo Ismailia port this road we need to evaluate the road volume to capacity ratio at peak hour before and after the given mode shift so we will calculate basically the volume to capacity ratio before we shift some of the vehicles from the road to the trains and we will calculate it also after shifting and then compare both solutions the number of lanes is six or three in each direction of this road and the conditions that we are going to shift based on it are written here 70 percent of trucks will shift to rail if the travel distance is more than 50 kilometers and 30 percent of trucks will shift to rail if the travel distance is, is less than 50 kilometers and we are interested in trucks public minibuses and buses only so it means that this route here is assumed to be accessible by these types of transport modes mg heavy truck is indicated here in the red color which has 27 percent the public minibuses here in orange are given by it is not really orange it's nearly yellow it's given by 11 percent and the buses are given by let's see the bus here in this in this pie chart this private car 
شير تاكسي بابليك ميني باص بابليك باص بابليك مايكرو باص I think this uh, this percentage of buses is around seven uh, percent. It is given in the next slides. We will see it. We are also given here the traffic analysis zone one and the traffic analysis zone two. We can we can say it origin to destination. We have the traffic volume vehicle per day, and here the percentage of traffic, and also we are given here the travel distance to judge the mode shift. Here we are given the speed versus capacity in this table. Our speed is C. I'm sorry, the, the level of service is C. And the speed is 60 miles per hour. The maximum service flow rate is 2020 passenger cars per hour per lane so this can be our capacity for one lane only so now we need to get the V over C it is easy to calculate the C it is 3 multiplies this 20 20 Now we need to know how to get the V. Our hourly traffic volume by direction, we are using the inbound direction because it has the higher number of traffic. It is given here to be 5,500 vehicles. So in the previous slide from figure number two, at the peak hour volume at 8 a.m., we calculated the flow to be 5,500 vehicle per hour. This 5,500 includes all types of vehicles. From the pie chart, we obtained that the truck percentage is 27%, the minibus is 11%, and the buses or six percent i told you that this was seven but i was wrong this is six percent so in order to compare the vehicles with which with each other we, we cannot count cars with trucks or cars with many buses they both occupy a different area in the road so we have to convert the trucks buses and mini buses to cars using this conversion factor for the truck here the conversion factor is given by 2.5 minus 1 and i will tell you why let's see the number of vehicles it is 5500 this contains all types of vehicles plus 27 percent this is the truck's percentage multiplies the total so in, in, when I multiply the 27 multiplies the 5500 I could obtain the number of trucks multiplies 2.5 minus 1 minus 1 here because in the beginning in this 5500 there was number of trucks so I didn't count it two times so I, I did here minus 1 plus 11 percent the percentage of minibuses multiplies the total multiplies the conversion factor 1.8 minus 1 and again this minus 1 here because from the beginning 
in this 5500 there was a number of mini buses so I didn't count it two times so I made the conversion factor to be minus one and the same is done for the buses here it is six percent multiplies the total number of vehicles multiplies 2.5 also minus one of course the conversion factor will be given in the exam so now I could obtain the new number of vehicles to be in passenger car units only eight seven zero seven it is it is a logical answer because of course a truck if you have a truck like this it occupies more than one car so I, I expected this number to increase from 5,500 to 8,707. We have the lane capacity to be 2020 passenger cars per lane per hour. So we could obtain the volume to capacity ratio, which is the volume divided by the capacity. This zero should be two it will be 1.44 of course the road is over capacity this number here should be less than one now let's apply the possible mode shift in order to decrease the volume to capacity ratio to be less than one we were given at the beginning of the example two mode shifts situations we, we were given 70% will shift to rail if the travel distance is more than 50 kilometers and 30% will shift to rail if the travel distance is less than 50 kilometers here we have the percentage that will be deducted and the travel distance. Let's apply in the first option. So we are looking for percentages which are which have travel distance more than 50 kilometers. So we have this one and this one here. All these have travel distances more than 50 so let's sum them up it will be 12.2 plus 4.6 plus 3.5 plus 3.1 plus 2.6 plus 2.5 plus 1.9 this will give us one second I will do it 12.2 plus 4.6 plus 3.5 plus 3.1 2.6 plus 2.5 plus 1.9 this will give us 30.4 percent so we here we have the 70% that will be shifted from trucks so here this 70% will be shifted from the existing scenario which is 27% multiplies the 30.4% plus the second scenario which is 30% this 30% here multiplies also the trucks multiplies the remaining part which is 100 minus 30.4 will give you this 69.6 multiplies the total vehicles this will give us 627 trucks so these number of trucks 627 will be deducted 
using this number of vehicles. So the new number of vehicles will be the existing value, which is it's uh, 8,707 minus the new number of trucks that will be deducted from the road or will be shifted to rails multiplies the conversion factor here this is without minus one because we already have here the total number of cars we don't need to reduce two point, uh, minus one from this 2.5 this is a conversion factor from trucks to passenger cars so the new passenger cars will be 7140 passenger car units running on this road or let's say it's the equivalent passenger car units the new volume 2 capacity will be our volume here 7140 divided by 2020 this, this zero here should be 2 multiplies 3 will give you 1.19 so the conclusion here the road is still over capacity because this number should be less than 1 so we need to do further mode shifts please if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me on my email I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you very much and stay safe.